My inspiration for most of my work uh, is derived from nature, found materials, but, but more deeply rooted in the, the textures and some of the relationships that we have with nature that I think, you know, maybe go less recognized today than they used to since we've distanced ourselves. They do stuff with hands and feet. With those, there's that interesting connection of, like our feet and our hands are our interface with the world. I mean, they're one of some of our most important body parts in that way. So the dialogue between those uh, and these architectural kind of elements that I uh, juxtapose them with or hybridize them with in the sculpture kind of creates that, some of that surreal kind of airs. I came to uh, CCAD uh, in the mid 90s to study illustration. I wanted to do uh, comic books or uh, fantasy art. So um, that obviously changed. <laughs> I've always made uh, three-dimensional objects, walking sticks, jewelry. I did all this kind of stuff and figured out how to do it when I went, before I even came to college. Um, I started doing 3D things. So it was kind of the very beginning of uh, me dabbling in making actual objects. Um, some of them were functional too because that was a vehicle to get to the experience of the material, to learn about the material, um, to have that function as a driver. I actually started casting metal. I think that was one of the biggest uh, impetuses to me studying sculpture. Metal casting was what I was really, really excited about. I basically never looked back after my first bronze cast. Uh, I went to graduate school to cast iron uh, because I wanted to make sculptures that would actually physically degrade. They would rust. They could, you could put them outside and do things um, with them that way. But the thing about casting metal that kind of ties into where we are now uh, with the work. The metal has always been uh, my way to meet nature in the middle, to recreate uh, a formal element to combine with the natural elements that I find or natural materials or objects that I find and help to bring that uh, message or concept or idea out by partnering with those natural materials. So Bone Collector comes from this idea of, um, I've always found sycamore branches and their knot work that happens when they scar uh, to be very bone-like, kind of like a, um, like a femur. I've always thought of them as looking like bones. So I just decided one day that I'm gonna start picking these up strictly to do a piece about collecting these tree bones and touch on the beauty of, of the natural weathering that they have and the process that got them there, but also where I meet nature in the middle and basically have that material adopt another identity and vocabulary. I do think we're in conflict with nature quite a bit uh, with our choices and we don't think long term and nature is long term. I do think that sometimes we make choices without um, actually working on what the outcome will be and understanding what the outcome will be and a lot of the choices we make serve a means to an end. Ever since I, even my earliest work, I was bringing nature into the gallery. And I think there's, there's a magic to that. Going back to people who really live in the city and they're city dwellers and they, you know, they're, they're, all their extracurriculars in their life are social or going to the restaurant or the bar or you know, a, another event around town. It's like, get out of town, get into the woods, get in nature and connect with that. I think uh, making work like this uh, helps some people uh, reconnect with nature in a different way. And my job as the artist is to 
kind of recreate those materials and reassemble them and compose them in a way that speaks to that.